Hi everyone, it's Hannah Schooner, or Schooner or Later, and this is my first video of my Let's Build a Class series. In this video, I'm going to break down the Barbarian class, and basically do an overview of all of the choices that you're going to have to make and the options that you have when building your Barbarian. The first thing are races. I would just like to clarify that there is no correct race for each class. You can play whatever you want to be. But that being said, races are naturally good at certain ability scores that can greatly benefit you when building your character. Goliaths, Half-Orcs, and Tritons are naturally strong, so they will give you a racial bonus to your strength modifier as well as constitution. The Dragonborn race is naturally strong but is also charismatic, so you would get a racial bonus for strength and charisma. Races that have racial bonuses for constitution include any kind of dwarf, any kind of genasi, and the lizard folk. Using whatever generation method your dungeon master prefers, a standard array or a manual with the rolling a d6 and dropping the lowest number, you will want your strength to be your highest ability score followed by your constitution. The rest of your ability scores can be in whatever order you wish, really, depending on what kind of personality or abilities you want your character to have. Commonly, the third highest is dexterity, as agility is very helpful in combat. If you've seen a lot of memes, specifically on TikTok, about how barbarians aren't very smart, it's because a barbarian usually doesn't have need for the intelligence ability score, so it's most often the dump stat, as we call it, for barbarians. But it doesn't have to be this way. You could have a smarter barbarian that is also really good at fighting. It is just most common that intelligence is the dump stat because barbarians won't really use it, unless they're roleplaying. At level 3, you will have a choice for your barbarian's primal path which is basically like a barbarian subclass. The primal path that you pick will make a significant difference in how your barbarian works. Although you may be making a level 1 barbarian, it can be very beneficial to know what kind of path you might be leaning towards in building your character. All barbarians will have the rage feature, but if you choose the path of the berserker, then your barbarian will have boundless rage. Starting at level 3, you'll have something called a frenzy, which allows you to make an additional melee attack as a bonus action while you're in rage. And at level 6, you'll have something called mindless rage, which makes you immune to being charmed or frightened. And at later levels, you'll get intimidation and retaliation. If your goal is to be a heavy hitter that can do an extreme amount of damage in a short period of time, Berserker is your choice. If you choose the path of the Zealot, then your barbarian's rage will stem from a deity, divine energy, like a deity of combat or war or destruction even. A lot of people can compare this to a paladin that isn't forced to follow the rules or doesn't want to follow the rules, and they're not far off with that comparison. At level 3, you'll be able to add divine power to your strikes and deal additional damage that's either necrotic or radiant. You'll get to choose, depending on what deity you choose. As you level up, you'll have more divine powers that start coming to you. The path of the Battle Rager is restricted to dwarves, unless your dungeon master lifts the restriction. If this restriction is lifted, however, you'll have to come up with a pretty cool story as to how your half orc or your goliath got buddy-buddy with the dwarves and chose this path. The path of the Battle Rager is one of the most intimidating barbarians because of how much spiked armor they wear. At higher levels, your enemies will take damage simply by attacking you because of how much armor you're wearing. The theatrics and the rage and the spiked weapon specifically are something that this path is known for. The path of the Storm Herald usually comes from a barbarian who trained alongside druids or rangers. You channel your rage into an aura of primal magic, so you'll have some magical abilities. This is a great path for if you want a very complex backstory, but if you want to be one of those heavy-hitting barbarians, this might not be the best choice for you. This is great for more utility barbarians and taking defensive shelter in nature. The path of the Ancestral Guardian will give you such a detailed backstory that it starts even before your character was born. If you choose this path, then during your rage in combat, you'll be able to call upon your ancestors to fight alongside you. They will work with you to knock down your enemy's defenses and ensure you win that fight. 
At later levels, Spirit Shield will help protect you from a lot of damage. This feature is great against one target. It can make that target have disadvantage and it can do a lot of for the defenses of that target. If it's in a larger group, then you'll have to pick one of the creatures. But either way, this is a great path for having spiritual energy with you. The path of the Totem Warrior is slightly similar to the Storm Herald, in where these barbarians are also attuned with nature, but they're most specifically attuned with beasts. At level 3, you'll be able to pick a totem, which is either a bear, an eagle, a wolf, an elk, or tiger. Then, during your rage, you will take on physical abilities or physical descriptors of that totem. Each totem has different benefits of choosing it. The most common totem that a barbarian of this path will take is the bear. Since your path is not chosen until level three, you can wait to decide and see what kind of dynamic your party has and what hole you might need to fill. Next, you will pick a background, which will help you build your backstory of your barbarian, as well as give you a table of personality traits, flaws, bonds, and ideals that will also help you mold your character and figure out what kind of person he or she or they are. Some backgrounds that can be really fitting with a barbarian include the folk hero, the entertainer slash gladiator, the soldier, and the outlander. But really, you can choose whatever background you want. Just pick and decide and weave how your barbarian became the way that they are today. Next, you'll determine your alignment, your faith, whether you are a storm herald or a totem warrior, what kind of deity you might worship or not, as well as your lifestyle, how much money you have, how you might live, that sort of thing. You can then determine your age and physical description depending on what race you chose. Some races age the same way as humans, some age faster, some age slower, so you can use this information to help build your physical description of your character. Picking a name can be rather easy. There are plenty of name generators for specific fantasy races. So if you choose a Goliath, you could look up Goliath name generator or half orc name generator. But another thing that I like to do is if you like a character in a book or a movie or a TV show in a fantasy setting or there's a name that you've always really liked, just put it in. It doesn't always have to go along with your race. But if you're stuck and you're not really sure how to start, there are plenty of name generators that are available to you that I will drop in the description. Use everything that you've chosen to fill in the blanks and build your character's backstory. This is one of the most exciting things about a character. Where were they born? Did they have, what kind of childhood did they have? How did they grow up? Why are they an adventurer today? Just all of those amazing things. There's a great resource called the Blank Handbook for the, each of the classes that color codes what are great choices for the classes and what might not be so great choices. I will also drop this in the description to help you choose skills and races if I mentioned races, but you might want to look into others. Depending on your dungeon master, you can also play a bugbear or a hobgoblin um, and a kobold, I think, but that's if your dungeon master is allowing these things. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this was helpful in breaking down how to build your barbarian. I will drop a ton of helpful links in the description of this video. If it was helpful to you, go ahead and like and comment, subscribe if you'd like, and I will see you later. Thank you.